Well, hey everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So in the waning hours of the evening, I'm gonna work on the farm. So restorative agriculture today. I split my time between building that house, a full-time job and uh, restorative agriculture. But behind me is a hazy sun. So uh, I wanna take advantage of it uh, uh, instead of like full heat and full sun. So let me do that. So what I'm gonna do today is go up to the horse pasture and I am going to cut these uh, mow these coreopsis out as well as i believe that's texas mint i'm not quite sure what this is the bees love it i let it go but now is the time for me to whack them both before uh, uh before the uh, they go to seed so oh it's a little yellow if that's a yellow flower in texas it's probably in the coreopsis family <laughs> so just, just call them coreopsis uh so let me uh show you here Hey, you're way back there behind the sawmill and all that. See that field of yellow? Well, I would say they don't hurt anything. The cattle don't like to have the flowers jamming in their eyes when they're grazing, so they avoid that area, and then they overgraze areas where there is grass. See that? So uh, what I need to do is get out in a hay pasture and knock it down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see. Oh, I got a, uh, I've been working on mowing for a couple of days, so I just have time for a little quick video. Uh, hope to get some sun, sunset videos and with the drone. So I, I need to put the string on the Ryobi. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. So Ryobi makes these pre-cut uh, string trimmers and uh, lines. So just buy these. Don't, don't make your own. It's a lot of hard work. These go in a lot easier. If you do buy them, you need the .095 or else you just blow through it. And it's not worth the mowing. So, but I find the Ryobi lasts a long time. There might be something out there that lasts a little longer. So uh, now this has been used for a while. So I hope you can notice when it runs out of string, sometimes you get lucky and the arrows line up just like that. So as you see, there's arrows here, arrows there. That means I could tuck that string right through there. I feel, I could feel a storm in the air. I'm really hoping that if I mow this, that, uh, I get uh, I get the wind and the rain. <laughs> poor poor field. I try not to mow. Right now there's a heat heat dome over Texas, actually over Mexico, and it's bottled up the heat here in Texas too as well. Uh, you know it's it's El Nino, La Nina. They don't know. I mean it was La Nina, La Nina last last year, and it was supposed to be wet and cold and. It's two years of drought in Texas. And I was just murder. Anyway, so it, it laces through as long as the arrows line up like that. So then you pull it all through so it's even. Normally I don't have it all twisted up, but you know, doing a video is, is that. And then I, I just pull it all the way through till both sides are level. Let me walk that out off camera, no doubt, because I'll be 25 feet away. I've seen some of these where they automatically spin in. I read instructions. I just don't. I read instructions. I just don't read them well enough. And I only read them if I get stuck, if that makes sense. So, but if they're, if it's too far off and you leave too much and it's out of balance, your Ryobi uh, string trimmer won't, uh, won't run. So then you just crank it back. It winds back in. I haven't tried to run the string trimmer and see if it runs in automatically. But down in a clicky clack, if you know better than I do, this is how I do the Ryobi string trimmer. I I could be wrong. I could get an education by the YouTubes out there in the world. Well, that's about even. It'll it'll break off and even up for me. You know, normally I'd snip that in. <laughs> I, let me, I will. I, let me let me get working though. I'm running out of daylight. Well, behind me, you can see the line, Coreopsis, where I mowed it. And I, I'm mowing it six, eight inches high. I'm just chopping the tops of the heads off the Coreopsis, as well as what I'm calling Texas Mint. I'll look it up and type in what it actually is. My theory is, is that the cattle don't like those poking at their eyes. So let's take a look at my theory, rotate. So this is the th pasture where I've, I'm doing some work and look, there's some cows. But I want to point out 
this field. <laughs> There's five times more cows on this side where I mowed yesterday, just chopping the tops off than there is here. And this is how, about how this hedgerow is representative of what had happened if you don't maintain a pasture. It just grows wild. Now I'm going to weed whack that. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get the drone up, which I have to get up. But there's your, my mow line. Let me follow along. There's the evidence of no cattle. And uh, I said no cattle. Let's say five cattle. And right there's 21 cattle. So four to one preference. A nice even field so and uh, all I'm doing is just mowing these before they go to seed they're lovely but they belong in a garden not in a field hay belongs in a field grass things to eat but I have to use this cell phone for the drone so I won't be chatting in it while I get the cell phone up when I get it up we'll fly over the cows a little bit take a look the sunset is coming so I don't even know if I'll get mowing we'll find out Well, this is me mowing those coreopsis. So, uh, now I don't mow in Texas. I always have a green green yard. I got a green thumb, but that's because uh, of two things. One, I don't mow when there's no moisture. I don't. Uh, it's either morning or evening, or I got to know rain's on the way, or it's just got done raining. It's just not worth mowing in the dry. Also, you could cause fires down here, but. Uh, the other thing is I do weed whack when it's bone dry and uh, that's to my advantage once you weed whack uh, when it's bone dry that stuff doesn't come back so now I don't use any kind of uh, herbicides twice in my life I've known people a cousin and then a family friend member who uh, who used herbicides aggressively uh, probably not to the manufacturer specifications but uh, they used it aggressively and uh, the one person was all covered in white <laughs> powder when they came back in and both of those people got neurological diseases later on in life one got lupus and one got ms i'm of the opinion that uh, ms and lupus and a lot of neurological diseases are leftover herbicides uh in our food and it's killing us and it kills us slow it gets after the seeth of the of the neural nerves and you know that which we're calling lupus and they could test for it so, oh you got the you know you got lupus well I, I don't know did the our genes change I, I've, I've read once every seven years everything changes in our body 
renews. And our genes are not our genes. That's why there's, you know, birth defects, right? Your genes aren't your genes. They change. Everything that touches you, a virus, everything touches you, changes your genetic composition. And uh, I'm of the opinion free radicals inside of herbicides kill you. So I stay away. And I've got two tangential evidence uh, in my life of people that uh, when I looked at as a young person, I went, oh my God, you, you're covered in herbicide. Go wash that off. And they just ha ha it off. And later on, both got very, very ill. And one, one passed away, in fact. But So I don't. But uh, uh, off my high horse, herbicides along a fence line is like a season in Texas where all the ranchers go out and do it. And, you know, you got to keep stuff from growing on your fence line or else uh, it, it will just turn into a, a valley of brush. But I do that with uh, weed whacking. <laughs> and since I use solar, uh, you know, other than buying the weed whacker, it doesn't cost me anything. Uh, and uh, I wear safety glasses. So my risk of uh, a permanent injury while weed whacking is pretty low. So, but I do wear chaps. I'm putting them on right now. So, I uh, can you whack? Hey, can you a weed whack in shorts in Texas? Well, no, <laughs> but you can if you get yourself a pair of chaps. So there you go. I put on chaps right over my shorts. So that's what I'm gonna do. So in this video, I said uh, it takes me 10 days to mow. And uh, that's because uh, I'm mowing in moisture, so mornings or nights for the grass. And uh, also I cut super high in Texas. People mow right down. Hey, this, this isn't, uh, you know, Michigan here. This is, your grass down here needs shade. And that means that the grass has to be high enough to shade the roots. So don't go out, don't mow it so low. Anyway, I've always had a good good yard, and I've had people go, "Ah, oh, what are you doing? What, what uh, chemicals are you putting on? You know, what fertilizers?" And I believe in fertilizers, but none, zero. So, uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and set the camera up. I'll do a little weed whacking here on this coreopsis. I don't suppose you can see down there anymore because it is night, but you know, let me zoom and see if you can see. So you know, there's my fence line, fence line. Fence line, and look you there, we're clear, right? So you can see where I la laid off right there. Anyway, that's that's what I'm doing since it's hot. <laughs> I'm doing that. I do it twice a year. It does take a little while. Uh, I like the outdoors, so no big deal. But I can see why people are like, oh, I'll just drive by with a buggy and spray. Uh, spray and uh, you know you do you I'm just saying in my life I've seen what I believe is neurological damage uh, caused by poor handling of, of herbicides and the same could be said with pesticides we know those kill but I'm of the opinion herbicides do all right without further ado look at that Texas mint along there let me go ahead and run this weed whacker string trimmer up and down that I seem to get about two football fields per charge, and then it gives up. I get string uh, with this Ryobi, the way it builds. I get uh, uh, maybe two football fields. It runs out about the same time. Let me let me whack this. Battery's already complaining at me. Did I grab an old battery? No, it says I didn't.
All right, so you see that didn't take very long, you know, just a couple of seconds. The other advantage is, is uh, I don't know, 30 acres perimeter all the way around, three foot of poison. Uh, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna lose an acre of grass. This way I don't lose anything. The cattle can graze right up to the thing. I don't have to worry about them ingesting any pesticides or anything, my horses. Uh, so I like that. And then the weeds don't come back any stronger. In fact, some weeds, when you spray pesticides like uh, silver nightshade, get stronger. Because <laughs> it kills all the competition. And that weed goes, mmm, I like that. And it gets stronger. So uh, anyway, that's, that's what I do. And the last benefit of of using a string trimmer on your fence line is you see where the fence is broken and uh, I'm not doing fence right now but uh, you need to do fences uh, I've seen loose wires go up into an animal's eye and kill it so you got to get them you got to get the broken strands out of there um, and I'm heading that way I've got a lot to do build a house and you know a restorative agriculture and everything I'm doing but uh, anyway, let me without uh, further ado, this is enough for mowing. Now you get why it takes me 10 days. Uh, I'm a pretty much a mowing perfectionist. I, I just try to listen to the grass and do what the grass wants. And uh, this year, I'm mowing out the Coreopsis. Last year, I mowed out, uh, I mowed out the um, Silverleaf Nightshade. Listen, you look at my fields. They're pretty healthy looking. They're pretty healthy. Uh, my, my neighbors have, doesn't have his Coreopsis mode yet or anything and his cattle are still in there but you know we, you can look at the fence line and, and see that there's a you know there's reason to get in there but uh, and then the year before I did the mesquite uh, <laughs> so I'll get ahead of this in, in three to five years I'll get this field will be a, a sea of of delicious grass for cows <laughs> because I'll get a I'll, I'll mow and then uh, this fall I'm going to get get my swales cut in and then drag a uh, disc just drag it to death it'll look like I've killed it but what that does is it cuts up all of the rhizomes of the grass and spreads them out and really makes grass take off grass can out compete weeds so, and then I'll overseed, and I'll overseed with uh, Tifton, which is not an organic, but Bermuda, pure Bermuda, and some other organics that I'll mix in there. Maybe a little bit of uh, clover, maybe alfalfa. It's awfully hot here in Texas for that. But I thought I could get some growing in the spring, and it'll die out. Maybe it'll go to seed. Anyway, um, I try to use organic grass seed as well, but... Uh, for that so that'll receive but that disc in that I think by next year I will have good pastures and then I have to figure out how to make the hog leave me alone <laughs> all right I'm gonna turn off the camera it's a low light camera I can still see me making an image but uh, this is enough you get the fact that it takes me a long time to mow and this is uh, I'm doing mow and, and driveway uh, gravel all at the same time. Plus, I have a full-time job, so uh, I need to get back working. So that's my two cents on mowing. I appreciate you much. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Bye.